Hello again YouTube. Today I'm going to have a go at building a kit. Now, something I've done loads of times. I've got lots of these little kits kicking about. I'm sure you've uh, built a few yourself. They're pretty easy. They come from China. They've got lots of little bits in a bag. Uh, no instructions. Um, but they're not difficult to build. Uh, so, you know, I've done quite a number of those. Uh, this one's a little bit different though. Uh, this one... This kit, it was £20.19.99, including Prime Delivery from Amazon in the UK. came next day, um, but it's a bit more complex, uh, and it's, a, it's an oscilloscope kit. So I'm not expecting that much from it in terms of using it as an oscilloscope, uh, but as a kit, it looks fairly complex. So it comes with a scope lead, so this has got a BNC connection on it. And you've got your ground lead and the probe lead. Um, and given that it's, it's only got a crocodile clip on it, and probably nothing else inside here. Let's see, I'm not expecting. No, there's no screw on terminal. So to make that useful, I'd probably have to take that off and put on some sort of standard probe. Uh, so I'll have a look at that. Comes with instructions use a manual quite a lot of parts uh, it looks like it's got a couple of big PCBs and a display board it does this one does come with a case uh, and you've got a solder some SMD parts so that'll be interesting on the back yeah, quite a lot of parts. Some of them are very small. Some of them look like SMD parts. So that that will be interesting. Uh, what we got here? Oh, so this is the assembly instructions. Continued. Step four, step five, step six, and then on the back how to use and a list of the functions so again I'll, I'll play with this if I get it working I'll play with it and use it to, to have a look at things but I wouldn't use it at work I wouldn't rely on it for any uh, accurate measurements but let's see how far we get with it piece of foam ok so that looks like the main PCB and there's a daughter board here chaps on it so the case comes in multiple parts that looks like the front maybe the front half of the clamshell bag of components that's the bottom or the top it's got a switch one kilohertz pulse I think that must be a there must be a switch there, and that'll be where the BNC connector connects. Back of the clamshell and other end of the case. So this is for power and the on-off switch. And that's it. Like I said, this little kit was twenty pounds from the from a UK stock from Amazon. Uh, I don't I can't remember who the seller was. So I'll leave a review for them on. Amazon once I've finished the kit build. See that? Almost taking the tip off my finger. And I haven't even turned the solder iron on yet. Wait till I introduce heat into the process and see how much damage I can do myself. Okay, so I've just had a, a quick look through the instructions and uh, the first thing I asked you to do is to test this display. So it says check the display. So I've had a look over, there's no physical damage. But it's asking to plug in a 9 volt uh, supply into the, the power connector under here. So I'm just going to do that. I'll switch on. There we are, the display is lighting up. It's got some text. There's a shell running, and there you are, that's it's got some. 
information on the display it's just showing jitter at the moment that's uh, that's what's expected so that's all okay so I'll just turn that back off so that's a good sign I'll just unplug the supply again I'll leave that there for use when it's finished so I'm just going to get some of these move some of these parts out of the way for now um, before I go any further I'm going to take these small parts I'm going to put them in this ice cube tray because there are lots and lots of tiny little parts including some really small screws uh, so I'm going to take a pair of tweezers and I'm going to put these all into the ice cube tray I won't make you sit through that, I'll pause the video for that Okay so I've had a look through the instructions and this box here is the box to describe all the resistors. Now these resistors are tiny. They're eighth of a watt resistors. And you see from the size of them, they're absolutely minute. I've already dropped one on the floor. So rather than go through them as a as I use them, I've got I've taken a list of them here and I've put some double-sided sticky tape on my pad. And I'm going to determine the value of these resistors and as I do that I'm going to stick them to the sticky tape uh, so that when it comes to uh, to using them in the build I'll just I'll have them already sorted and it will save me sorting through them at the time. So I've used my trusty old fluke meter here to measure the value of each of these uh, resistors. I could have looked at the colour bands on them but to be honest um, they're tiny and I'm getting quite old, my eyesight's not what it used to be so uh, it's easier just to meter them out and stick them onto the paper so I'm going to set these aside for now so that I don't lose any um, but this means I'm much less likely to lose them and I can just pick them off the paper using the tweezers like this um, but I've got them all sorted and uh, they're ready to go when I need them I also have all my parts here. Um, I've got them separated. Uh, I haven't separated all the individual values of uh, these capacitors for example because there's only four of them so I'll just uh, look at them when, they, when they're needed. These switches for the same. There's a couple of different slide switches uh, so I've put them in separately uh, but again they're all separated into their different part categories and again ready to go when I need them in the kit build. So step one was to check the, the display board, we've done that, um, that's working okay. I'm going to put this little daughter board in the clamshell case just to keep it safe for now. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is assemble the test signal terminal. Uh, so this is a an output terminal um, and it says bend the contacts. So it's basically looking for me to bend the contacts up. Like so. And so we've got 4.8 times 0 0.8 terminal. Before solder and bend the terminal to the shape as shown in the photo, and that's what it's shown. It's shown it bent at roughly at a right angle. So this terminal it doesn't actually show me where to put it. Um, so there's it shows you the actual terminal itself, and it shows you it going on the board, but it doesn't show you where to put it on the board or which board to put it on. Ah, here it is here. Right, so that's maybe why I'm confused because this board is slightly different. If you look at this picture here, that board edge is solid. This board edge isn't. It's got two big notches out of it. There is a screw hole here. And it's on that side and there's that header. So it looks like it goes on this side. Like so. Okay, so I'll get the solder iron warmed up and I'll get that soldered in. 
Okay, I've just brought in my uh, my silicon soldering mat because a few of these components are going to be really near the bench when they're being soldered, uh, and I don't want to melt my cutting mat. Uh, if you've got a component that's really near the edge of a board, these little uh, tweezers are handy. They're forcep tweezers, so when you let them go, they grab. So I've seen a number of different techniques for holding components onto boards. I use some myself, like I've got a pack of blue tack. Um, the only problem with doing things like that is they tend to make a bit of a mess of your board, and there's more cleaning up to do. This is really handy just for things like this, where connectors are at the edge of the board. It clamps onto the board while you're soldering it, so it does it without making any mess. So you've got a lot less clean up to do at the end. Well, I had just taken a quick break to go and have dinner, and uh, a storm was rolling, it was really windy outside. Um, you can probably hear it during the recording, because I'm outside in my shed. This is where my workbench is. So if you hear some weird noise in the background, that's like more than likely what it is. Uh, you can, might also be able to hear that I'm starting to get a bit of a cold as well. I think that's just part of the, the winter weather, uh, fully settling in. Anyway, back to the, the project. So I've got the, the tab soldered on. Um, I've fixed the solder uh, a little bit, so it's a little bit better than it was. I've cleaned it up with some isopropyl alcohol. When you are soldering, it's better to clean off the flux when you get flux around the, where you've soldered. Give it a clean, a uh, little dry with a cotton bud uh, with some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, it just clears off that residue. If you don't clear it off over time, the residue can eat away at the surface, so it's best to get rid of it. Okay, our next step, our next uh, components. Uh, so, step two was the signal thermal. Step three is power connection. Now, it says this is optional. It's a... Uh, it's this little uh, connector here. Uh, it's optional, but I'm going to put it on anyway. So again, it doesn't really show us where to put it. It's got a picture of it on the board. Uh, so let's see if we can find it. So it's on the main board at the bottom end here. Uh, Okay, so here's a better picture here. So this is the main board, that way up. And the bottom end to here, so it says BGND. Okay. So, no, it's not. It's next to it. It's actually here. It's marked on it, plus and minus. And it even shows you which side it goes on. So, that's fine. And it goes on like so. And again, my little forceps can hold it on. Okay, that's clean enough. It's quite nice. I don't really need to nip off the top of these, but I just um, 
like to keep them like to keep them clean. It's not the straightest connection. But to be honest I'm not likely to use it anyway, so I'm not I'm not really that fussed. I just very slightly off the box but I'm not like I say, I'm not it's not that critical. Okay, next. Next part is a slide switch. Uh, that's SW5. Double pull, double throw. So D, DP, DT is double pull, double throw. Let's just see if we can rock it in. There we go. So let it cool down a little bit between soldering pins. It's not too bad. It's probably a good thing I don't have to solder for a living. I think I would, I would uh, be too great at it. But as a hobby, it's okay. Now to clean these off, I'm using some cotton buds, and they're quite old cotton buds, so they're plastic. Uh, they've got a plastic core. Um, you don't really get these anymore because they're really bad for the environment, especially if people flush them down the toilet. They end up in the water, and they end up everywhere, so you don't really see them anymore. Um, the advantage of using those for electronics is that the the IPA, the isopropyl alcohol, sits in the middle, so you get a little store of it inside, and it it'll it'll keep wetting for a while, um, but you don't get that anymore. The, the new paper ones, uh, they just simply don't do the same. To be honest, though, they're not the best for electronics anyway, because as you can see I'm pulling off fibers with my tweezers here. Um, you do get electronics lint free uh, buds and they basically they're, they don't do that, they don't go all fluffy like that and they're designed for exactly this job uh, but I'm not really, you know, this, is, this isn't that critical so I'm, I'm not fussed about it too much. Okay next, next we need a five pin header male and that's the one row, four pin. So back to our kit, and that'll be us here. Okay, so this one is J2. I'm actually going to stick this down before I go any further because it keeps flopping about and I'm concerned that it'll get damaged. I can see some flux on the board there from where that's been soldered. So 
open up. So I think despite the fact I haven't cut my fingernails in a week, it doesn't seem to want to come off. Okay. I'm just going to peel it halfway. Um, in fact, yeah, I'm going to peel it partly. I'm just going to stick it down partly because I think it's going to have to come back off again because there are a couple of solder points here, a couple of through holes here and here, and some here that might need might need components put in them. Um, they may just be test points. I think they are just test points, uh, but I'll confirm that before I stick the screen down properly. But just so that it, there's less chance of getting damaged, I'll stick that like that just now. Okay, back to the the jumper. It's J2, so it appears to go on from this side. So whenever you've got a, a row of pin jumpers, what I normally do is solder one of them. Oh, my solder iron seems to have cooled down. Okay, so I'll solder one of them, you can see that it's off at a bad angle. So um, what I'll do is put my finger on the other end and just reflow that a little bit and straighten it up. And you can pretty much straighten it up in one go because you can feel it squaring off against the board. And then I can go back and solder the other three. That's fine. Okay, next one. Tack switches, tactile switches. So switches one, two, three, and four. So these are the big um, micro switches. These ones here. Okay, so we've got four of these, and these are here labelled switch one, two, three, and four. And these are pretty straightforward to fit. They're, uh, they're nice and big. The terminals, the through hole pins, have got a shape to them. So they're shaped and bent in such a way that when you put them on, they snap into the board, holding them tight, which is nice. It much easier to solder. There we are. So all four are sitting down nice and tight against the board. So I'll just run along these. I am. So, next step remove resistor R30. Uh, so, let's see what it says. 
let iron stay on one of the pads, the resistor until the soft. So R30 is used to bypass switch 5, so as the main board can be tested without the power switch. Okay. So, and then, so you remove the switch, now apply power again, test the power switch and tack buttons for their correct functions. Okay, so, R30. Okay, R30 is just here. likely to be a zero ohm link and to be honest it's extremely small so I'm not sure if I'll yeah it's, it's a zero ohm link so exactly the same would be just to put a blob of solder across there it doesn't have a, a resistance value at all Okay, so now it asks us to retest the board. And switch on. Okay. On, off, on. I'll let it boot up and then see if. Okay, that seems to work. So each of the buttons, see this one highlights that one, this one highlights that, highlights auto, and this one pauses. That's the OK button. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, next. So step two, number one, resistors. So this is where I'm going to go through the board. Uh, so I'm going to guess that a lot of the resistors are going to be on this daughter board. Uh, uh, possibly all of them. I don't actually see any resistor positions on here at all. Uh, we've got lots of resistor positions on this daughter board. So we've got we've got an array of resistors here, here, some up here, and we've got two, three positions for electrolytic capacitors and resistors. Yeah, oh, they're all resistors. So yeah, I'll, I'll uh, go through now and connect all of these resistors and capacitors. So I've taken my piece of paper and then we've got basically all of these. I'm just going to start from the top and work my way down. So R1 is a 510 ohm and R1 is just here. So I'm not going to bend these. Uh, I don't have a professional resistor, you know, component former, um, and I'm not terribly fussed that they're not going to be formed exactly, you know, nice and square. I'm not really. I'm really not that fussed about that. Um, I'm more concerned about just getting them, just getting them uh, soldered in. Okay. Now I was I was initially going to leave all the legs on until I was finished and cut them all off and clean them up. But I'm finding they're getting in the way as I go, so I'm just gonna nip them off as I go along. Okay. Let's see R4 is the next one on our list. So eleven K.
aqui. Okay, so I've uh, put most of the resistors in now. We've only got two left. R13 and R15. Okay, so that's all the resistors in. I wouldn't get a job in a factory putting resistors in like that, but then I don't want a job in a factory, so yeah, I'm quite happy with that. And all of our resistors are gone. Uh, so the full list has been installed and I can get rid of that. Okay, the next thing on the, on the list, uh, ceramic capacitors. So I need to go by the book here because these are these are marked on the instructions uh, of what the values are. Okay, so let's see. Capacitor one is a 0.1 nanofarad. It's this one is a 104. Capacitor 1 Ok, so capacitor 2 is a 330 Which is this one That's capacitor 2 Right there I have to say, as I'm using this uh, this board mount, um, I'm more impressed with it now that I'm, I've got a kit in it. Uh, so far I've only used it for repairs and for tearing parts off of old boards, but it certainly seems to be much more use for doing this. In fact, it's quite ideal for this. Okay, capacitor 3 is a 1 pico. Hmm. Sorry, it's not capacitor 3. That's why I can't find it. It's capacitor 4. And lastly, capacitor 6 is a 150. Uh, capacitor 6. Can't see it. Oh, there we are.
Next step is the slide switch. So this is the larger switch, which is a double pole, triple throw. So I'm, I'm guessing this is going to be on the other board. Nope. Wrong again. It's on this board. Up at the top here. first ones take a bit of heating up because they're part of the metal case so the heat sinks away quite quickly and you have to try and uh, warm the whole part up so that the solder will melt properly Okay, that feels quite good. Okay, next next part, the electrolytic caps. So I've got three electrolytics. Let's see what they are. So it's a hundred nanofarad, sixteen volts. Yep, they're all the same. So again with electrolytic capacitors what I like to do is solder one leg and just press the top, melt, remelt the solder, reflow the solder and when you press the top you feel it clicking down onto the board and then it will sit nice and flush with the board and then you can go back and re-solder the other leg on each one. Okay so Electrolytics are on. Next thing's the BNC connector, <laughs> and that looks like it goes up here. Yeah, so we've got there we are.
I'm going to remove some of the excess from that. Okay, so that's not the prettiest solder joint in the world, but it's tight to the board and it's going to do. Okay, so the last part I have to do anything to on this board is this uh, J2, the pin header that connects, I'm assuming it connects the two boards. So again, let's see if I can get a little bit of solder to tape to one of these pins. Okay, so the main board appears to have its own page in the manual. Okay, uh, solder rotary encoder, so it mounts to the small PCB. Pay attention to the orientation of the PCB using the side with outline marking. So that's the rotary encoder. We don't have many parts left, we used all the small parts. We've got the button for the front of the encoder and we've got a selection of screws so I'm assuming that we're quite close to finishing. Okay. Ah, there we go. Right, okay. It's actually okay once it's in but getting it in there was a bit of a challenge. So let's just prop that on my tweezers like so. has to be quite well lined up because it's going to line up with the case at the front. Okay, there we go. Basically we're at this stage here and so yeah the, the pin's on the right side so I haven't made a mistake there. And the encoder goes through from the back and it tells you to mount it with two screws. Mount it into what? There's nothing to mount it into. Okay. I'm going I'm guessing it's gonna be into here because that seems to line up. So if I had yeah yeah that looks that looks about right. And it doesn't tell you to put it in the case at this point. But that all lines up. So I'm gonna assume that that's correct. So I need my tweezers underneath again to stand that off. So that I can solder on that rotary encoder. I don't really want to do it with the screws on because if, this, if it holds it off, I'll end up with it stuck like that. So let's get another bit of solder. Get one pin on. Again. Reflow that until it goes down flat. I'm 
Okay, so this bit's quite difficult. Okay, that appears to be down flat, and the pins and the screw holes line up. So I think we're okay at that. Okay. Right, so I need two screws. <coughs> and the screws it says are KA2 by 4. Okay, and I don't have anything to tell me what. Two is. I think I've got about three different types of screw. Yeah. So this is where it's starting to get to. The kit was actually quite, it was easier than I thought. Let's see what they are. Right there. 7mm and the little ones are 4mm ok so these ones these little ones are the KA 2x4 and these longer ones uh, I'm assuming are the case screws because there are 4 case screws so let's try a couple of these in here Okay, that looks good. Right. So, next problem I have is I need to get the cover off the LCD. So there's a protective cover on there. And it was visible. There we are. That's it. So I need to get that off before the before this gets screwed together, otherwise I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't have been able to remove that. Okay. That's right. Okay, so <clears throat> after a bit of messing about, uh, I've got the, the unit calibrated. Um it was quite a bit of messing about to be honest. The the process is actually fairly simple but uh, I didn't have it in DC mode and it didn't prompt me to do that I'm guessing they just assume that you know how to use an oscilloscope and how to use this one but I had it still in ground mode which meant I was getting nothing um, so that's fine I switched it to DC mode uh, and then did the calibration so if you're doing this yourself it goes at this step 4 here is in ground mode and this here is in DC mode and it doesn't tell you that, it doesn't tell you to do that but if you're doing it yourself make sure you have it in the, the correct mode before you start it'll save you about half an hour <laughs> it's 
time that could have been used for something else. Anyway, so the last step is to take these two parts, two bits apart again, so that it gets mounted into the backboard here. Um, Again, this gets mounted with the very small screws. And there's no need to horse these screws up. They're only going into plastic, so as soon as you start to get friction, that's when you stop. Okay, and I've just spotted a mistake, and it's my mistake. So this has to this has to go in with the board, and I've just read. Well, basically, I didn't read it properly. Um, so the board has to come back out a bit. Okay. I don't know if you can hear the wind outside, but it's getting pretty windy. There is a there is a storm hitting the UK at the moment. I don't know if it's got a name or not. All storms have got names nowadays. Um, but it was where where I am is quite far north in the UK. We're quite far south in Scotland. Um, we're on the River Clyde. It's not far from Glasgow. Uh, but when the weather's nice and I look outside the front of my house, I can see the Isle of Arran and the Irish Sea behind it, so we're quite exposed here, so we do tend to get weather worse than the surrounding areas. Okay, so that was step one. Next one's combine the front module and the back cover. Okay, front module and the back cover. Ah, okay, I've got to get that test pin through there. Next step, make sure the receptacle. Okay, we've done that. Attach the bracket before holding the two modules together. Bottom bracket, and that's what I missed on the top bracket. can actually hear foghorns in the distance uh, and the river's about two miles from here as the crow flies um, but you can hear them when the weather gets pretty bad so that means visibility on the river must have dropped quite far okay bottom brackets in attach the front frame and I don't think this has got any way up I think it's just it's symmetrical Okay, so I've now I've now calibrated the scope and I've got all the keys together. I've got it up and running. I've now I've connected the output. Sorry, I've connected the input to a weather station that I have on the roof of the shed, and it's currently talking to uh, an Arduino, telling it how uh, fast the wind speed is. Okay, so what you're seeing here now 
is a, it's a different view, so I've changed it to 10 milliseconds. So you're seeing the pulses as they come off the, the weather station. Um, so these are the, the number of pulses. They're 5 volt pulses, so it's 5 volts per division. So for each of these squares. Um, so it's a 5 volt logic chip I'm using. It's a, just a, well it's actually an ESP8266, but it's got 5 volt logic on it. So what you're seeing here is the 0 volts and 5 volt uh, per division. So that's quite handy to see that. Um, so for £20 I'm quite pleased with that. Um, I'm hoping it'll, it'll be useful uh, on the bench. Like I say, I wouldn't take it out and use it for work. But it'll certainly, it'll certainly be useful for projects around here. So this here, this box here, this is the... Um, this is the weather station controller. This is an Arduino, or it's an Arduino equivalent. It's an ESP8266. I think this was made by Hi-Let-Go. Um, a little uh, boost converter here. I think it might be. No, this is a buck converter. It's uh, providing the five volts that runs the that runs this little microprocessor. Uh, all this is doing here is it's taking the weather data. Now at the moment there's no data because I've bypassed it, I've got it running through this little oscilloscope. Um, but it takes the data and it calculates how fast the wind speed is and it, it tells me whether it's raining or not. Um, this is a Wi-Fi enabled chip so I can connect to it via Wi-Fi, I can connect to it on my phone and look at the data on it and see what the wind speed is and see whether or not it's raining. But at the moment I've Bypass that. I've bypassed the um, well. The one one of these lines is for the rain sensor, and the other one's for the wind sensor. And this is what I've got here. I've got it disconnected, and it's currently uh, feeding data in through this little oscilloscope. And if you have a look at the screen on the scope, you can see the pulses coming off the the anemometer, the the wind meter, um, because it's currently blowing a gale outside. So thanks for watching, um, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please give it a, a like, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and I'll see you in another video.